Hey guys, my name is Shubham. You are watching Azure 360, and I know that a lot of you guys are very excited about the latest version of Windows, that is Windows 11. It has a lot to offer, but there are a few points of caution, and that's exactly what we would be talking about in this video. First off, I'll tell you what the new features are, and then how you can proceed to install this new version of Windows and also some things that you should be on a lookout for while you are doing it. In the process, if you think that you like this video, then do drop us a like. Also consider subscribing to our channel and hitting that bell icon so that you're always notified of our latest videos. Okay, so first things first, what's new? So obviously there are cosmetic changes. You can see that everything is all glassy and rounded, very modern looking and also very bright looking in some cases. And also you have the ability to snap windows in a much better fashion because I like snapping windows. I'm a content creator, so multiple windows are open all the time, but now you have a much better way to do it. Now widgets are on the forefront in this version of windows. I think that's that has a lot to do with what iOS and iPadOS did earlier this year and last year. But well, they are here. The last time I recall using widgets was way back in 2008, I think on Windows Vista or Windows 7, not sure. But it wasn't a fun experience. It used to hog a lot of RAM, but I think now it's all optimized and we have much better hardware as well. Also new is the redesigned settings app. Yeah, it looks modern just with the whole theme of Windows 11. And I really hope that it can get much more work done as well because I have always been skeptical of the settings app because it's almost like having double vision. You also have control panel, which is a way more in-depth view of you know, changing settings, whereas settings app is just, you know, yeah, it's bare basic and it doesn't get a lot of work done. So I wish they could do something to get a hybrid version of these two things. Other than this, there are also performance improvements. That's right. You have much better boot up and wake up speeds. So the time is reduced in that. And also when it comes to your Windows updates, the updates are going to be 40% smaller. Yes, and they are going to be less annoying as well because most of it is going to take in the background. So hopefully there would be fewer notifications asking you to, hey, let's, you know, update your system at, you know, two o'clock in the morning while you're just watching a movie or something. Now, Windows 11 is also going to be much more secure because of a thing called TPM, a trusted platform module 2.0. Now, this is basically a form of a chip that's found either on your desktop or your laptop and your system needs to have it in order to upgrade to the latest version of Windows. We'll talk about this in just a moment, but this is something that you really need to consider before you upgrade. Now, gaming is also going to be enhanced on Windows 11. Not only will you have uh, inherent support for Xbox Game Pass and a lot of that jazz in the Xbox app itself, but you will also have support for direct storage. Now, what exactly is direct storage? Well, just think about it this way. You're playing a really heavy multiplayer game that involves you to download shaders like let's say Call of Duty uh, Warzone. So you're constantly online, you're downloading some shaders or graphics packs that are very important for your system to run the game with good graphics. Now, whenever you download something from the internet, it's coming compressed because, you know, sending large packets of data over the internet is wasteful and time taking. So something compressed is coming onto your system. Now, when it lodges onto your system, it has to go to your graphics processing unit. That is the GP GPU. And this thing does doesn't like compressed data. It likes everything nice and fancy and pitch perfect. So it likes uncompressed data. Now, in order to turn compressed data into uncompressed data, there will be some time lag. And that's what this new version of Windows is trying to remove with the help of direct storage. You also have auto HDR that will help you have a much better visual experience when it comes to gaming because you'll have much better color range and color depth. Now, moving on to the App Store, well, that too has received a design overhaul, but more importantly, it now supports a wider array of apps. So not only can you now uh, install the good old apps that were available on the store, but you can also install Win32 apps, you know, 90s ke zamane ka apps. 
and also you can install Android apps directly from the store. Now, other than that, you can also run progressive web apps. Now, what are these? These are basically web pages that act like apps. So these are very good for those systems that have very little memory and storage to spare. Now that we have glossed over some of the new changes in Windows 11, it's important to talk about the minimum system requirements that you need to install this version. Now, just to begin with, you need a 64-bit processor with minimum two cores and one gigahertz clock speed. Now, I have explained all of this in some of my previous elemental videos that I will be linking down in the description. So do make sure that you check them out to have a much better understanding of what this means. Other than that, you will require minimum of 4 gigabytes of RAM, 64 gigabytes of internal storage, and you will also obviously require uh, an internet connection, a graphics card that is DirectX 12 compatible with WDDM 2.X, a display that is greater than 9 inches with a minimum resolution of 720p, and finally, TPM, something that we mentioned in the previous segment. So what exactly is TPM? It's basically a form of a chip that's found on your motherboard. So if you have an assembled computer, it'll be fairly easier for you to get that chip and put it on it. But if you have a laptop, well, you are out of luck just in case your laptop doesn't have TPM 2.0. This basically protects you from hackers and makes your system much more uh, secure. Now, the problem over here is that Windows 11 actually requires you to have TPM 2.0 on your motherboard. Otherwise, you won't be able to go forth with the entire upgrade process. Now, this is problematic, not just for us average consumers, but also for enthusiasts. Just take this as an example. A lot of people were finding it troublesome to upgrade it even with the latest and greatest laptops that were powered by AMD chipsets. Even though they had TPM 2.0 chips on them. Why? Because they actually couldn't get the Windows 11 updater to approve the TPM 2.0 chip on their system. So they had to go down manually in the BIOS and turn it on. This already looks very painful, not just for enthusiasts, but also for the average consumer. And on top of that, people are actually scalping or hoarding TPM 2.0 chips at a time when we already have a silicon shortage. Now let's talk about how you can actually upgrade to Windows 11 from Windows 10. So first of all, you'll have to make sure that Windows 11 is available somewhere out there. And I'm pretty sure you will come to know because all the news websites, including ours, will try to tell you and bombard you with the information that yes, Windows 11 is out there. Now, once it is available, you will either get a pop-up notification or if you want to do it manually, you'll have to dive down into update and security. Then you'll have to click on Windows update. And if the update is available, you'll see the update that says feature update to Windows 11. Now, all you have to do is just download and install it. Now, also in the description, you'll find a link that will give you even more information about the things that are required in order to run Windows 11. And that was it for this video. I really hope that you found some value in it. If you did, do share it with your friends. Come down in the comments. Tell me what is the feature that you are most excited about in Windows 11. And as always, remember that for all things tech, log on to Gadget360.com.